Today I'm going to share with you my email sequence formula so that you can swipe it and put together your own welcome email sequence for people that download your free thing. Um, so that's in marketing terms, your lead magnet. That might be an ebook, a checklist, a webinar, all kinds of things. I'm going to link in the description below and you may find it up above if this works um, to my previous video, which will tell you, teach you how to make a cracking lead magnet. So this is a follow on to this video where I'm going to walk you through the email sequence formula so that you can put together your own welcome sequence. So maybe we should start by explaining what a welcome sequence is. A welcome e email sequence is a automated series of emails that goes out to somebody once they've downloaded your free thing. Um, now they're not only for three free things. It might be an email sequence that you send to people after they've bought a product, booked a service. Really, an email sequence is something that's triggered by an action. So the person on the other end, the person in your audience, takes an action and then they start to receive this flow of emails. What can be really hard if you're not a marketer <laughs> is knowing what on earth to put in these emails. So stick with me. I'm going to walk you through five emails. I'm going to show you real life examples of what goes in them and I'm going to walk you through each bit of them and what they're doing so that you can understand how to create your own. Um, I'm using a template which is included in my course, Underdogs Unleashed, which is a complete marketing course for positive dog buds. Um, but I'm gonna show you what's inside it today. If you want access to the actual thing and the lessons that go with it, um, I'll pop the link below to Underdogs Unleashed. All right, shall we get started? Okay, so what we wanna do is take people on a journey. They say yes to grabbing your free thing um, and then our job is to nurture these people to start helping them get to know, like, and trust you and to give them the help that we promised when they said yes to downloading the free thing. So email one is to deliver the free thing, but we don't wanna just do that. Let me show you the template and walk you through it step by step. So I'm inside the template that you get inside Underdogs Unleashed and you'll see that I've mapped out all of the emails, including a sample email flow. So we're gonna jump down to the actual sample because I think it's helpful not just to know, okay, email one should be deliver the freebie and introduce them to you, but like actually what do you put in it and what's going on here? All right, so your first email should deliver the free thing that you've promised and start to warm people up to who you are and how you can help them. So my sample example is for a um, recall training guide, um, but you can follow this formula, whatever it is your freebie is addressing. So what do we need? We need to decide how long to wait. What's the delay before somebody receives this email? So they've taken the action of saying yes to downloading your free thing. How long do we want them to wait before they get the first email? Now for email one, I'd always say instant delivery. People are flighty and they are going to forget about it if you don't deliver it to them straight away. So instant delivery for email one. That's the first thing to know. We need a subject line and some preview text. So the subject line is obviously what they're going to see in their inbox. And on some devices, you'll see preview text as well. So this can help us to increase what's called the open rate. And that is how many people open the email when it's delivered. Because just because somebody pressed yes to download in your free thing doesn't necessarily mean that they're actually going to open it. I know, crazy. So our subject line's job is to get people to open it. So for this one, I have led with your guide to tra train champion level recalls is inside. Why have I said that? So we wanna make sure it's crystal clear what this email is. They've likely never received an email from you before. As I said, we're all massively distracted and they may have forgotten already what it is that they've done if they've got a zillion tabs open, like my brain always does. And then preview text is just, I've used it to encourage, further encourage that open. Get started today and start your transformation. What do they want? What's the outcome they want? I would seed that in your preview. Okay, let's get on to the body copy. Try and ditch the high first name because it's just wasted space. So instead I put in that personalization at the beginning of first name and then go straight into the text. Uh, we don't want to waste space. People's attention spans are low and so we want to get straight into it. 
You're about to uncover the exact techniques I use to help people go from scared to unclip the lead to confident their dog will come back, even if their favorite distraction is insight. So we want that first bit of copy to really pull them in, think about what do they want? What's the outcome that they were looking for when they downloaded this thing? What's the outcome you promised them on the opt-in page? And what possibly are their objections? And even if is a really good way to address those objections. So we've told them what they're gonna get. We've seeded a bit of social proof and expert status in that these are the exact techniques that I use with people who pay me pretty much. And where am I taking them from and to, even if, what's your objection? And then we have a link to download the thing. Now I put that really close to the top of the email because we don't want to lose people. What's the action? What's the thing that we want somebody who gets this email to do? We want them to actually go as far as not just saying yes to the thing, but clicking the button and looking at the thing. That's our first job. Now there's two ways you can do this and I would test this with your audience. You could have this as a button or you could have just some copy with a hyperlink. And the reason I say to test this is because often we can think that you need a really fancy overly designed email. Different devices show things up in different ways. A lot of email service providers actually hide images and graphics and all that kind of stuff. So if you're relying on those in your emails rather than just text-based emails, you might find that your click-through rate, so that's people clicking on the things that you're sending them and engaging with the content, is low. That might not be because your content's bad, it might be because they can't see half the thing unless they click, click the button to say, allow images. So test whether you're gonna use a button or just some hyperlinked copy. Make sure it's obvious that it's hyperlinked, so change the color of it. Make sure it's underlined so people that know that it's something to click. So we want an intro, we want our link to our thing really early on, and then we wanna carry on. I wouldn't just stop there, because they're gonna forget about you really quickly if you do. So then I go into what I call the pain point. What did they imagine when they got the dog? What did they want? If they've got a recall problem, likelihood is that they, most people get a dog and really want to enjoy lovely long walks with them off lead, having a great time. And if you've got poor recall, that's not a reality. So we're going to start with that pain point And then we're going to say, well, what does it look like now? Now you're constantly scanning the horizon for things that will send your dog's focus down a rabbit hole. Maybe it's, okay, what does this actually look like for them? Okay, and you can change this depending on what, follow the same formula, but change it to what it is that you're delivering. Whatever it is that's grabbing your dog's attention and raising your anxiety levels, I know I can help you. And then I put another link to the download. Why do I do that? Because some people are quick action takers and they'll click that first link. Some people want more information before they decide whether it's worth their time. They're not going to scroll back up and find the link. We need to make it easy for them. So my biggest tip when it comes to sending emails is not to be shy about including too many links. So we link again, and again, we put some extra oomph here. So I said, don't miss the video demonstrations that will finally help you get what you want, essentially. So I'm letting them know that there's video demonstrations inside them that are going to be extra value. Seeing the training in action is what will make this doable for you. It will help you skip the mistakes. And then a quick tip in terms of how to put it into action. Start in a low distraction environment, take your time to watch the videos as many times as you need. And if you need any questions, shoot me an email. I'd love to help you. It's really good if you can in your first email to encourage people to reply to you. So you might do something even more direct than that. You might say, hit reply and let me know what your biggest takeaway was after watching, reading, whatever. The reason why this is helpful is there's something called email deliverability. So we can get people to opt into our email list. We can send them emails in order to get that to actually show up in their inbox. That's a whole nother topic, which I may do future content on. That's email deliverability. And it's a bit like a social media algorithm, right? The email inbox server says, is this spam? Is this relevant? Is this something somebody wants to open? And so therefore, if they open it and reply to it, that sends a signal to their email service reply provider that says, I want to receive this, I'm engaging with this, I've replied to it. So include something that encourages them to reply. That's your first email. Let's move on to the second. So email two, what's the job? Email two's job is to encourage people to either revisit the freebie and take action or visit it for the first time. So remember, 
not everybody that opts in will actually download the thing. So some people might not have even opened the first email. Some people opened it, maybe even clicked the thing and then decided they were going to come back to it later. Guess what happened? They forgot all about it instantly. So our second email, I would usually send one day after the first. So your delay is one day. And our goal is to remind them that they downloaded the thing and give them some extra inspiration and support to help them take action with whatever the thing is that you offer to help them with. So again, we need a subject line and a preview line. In the interest of keeping this video relatively short, I'm not gonna read through all of these, but you can see on the screen <clears throat> what I'm doing here. I will talk about this subject line just briefly. This one thing will transform your recall training. Why does this work? It's got a number in it, which works really well. It's a small number that works really well. There's only one thing I need to do to transform my recall training. Ah, oh, tell me what it is. And then the preview text, most people skip over this, but it'll make all the difference. What am I doing there? That curiosity peaking of alluding to the fact that most people make a mistake and skip this. I don't want that for you. <clears throat> okay. I said at the beginning, I don't do this anymore. I clearly wrote this a while ago. I would change this and say, did you have a chance to, in fact, I'm going to change it now while we're here. Did you have a chance to tap into your recall training guide and watch the videos first name? So we're getting that personalization in there. Again, personalization goes way beyond just putting somebody's name in it. That's a, another bigger topic of email marketing. I'm not going to get distracted. You'll see here that this is highlighted. And the reason for that is that I would link that to the free download again. Why? because nobody's gonna go back and try and find that first email where you have the link. And what do we want them to do? We want, if they haven't looked at it before, to get them to have a look at it this time. And if they have looked at it before and they need to revisit it, we wanna make it easy for them to find it. So in that very first line, I'm putting the link to the thing again. Reminder, don't be skimpy with your links, include them. More on that in a moment. And then I go into, I'm gonna share the one thing that's gonna make a big difference to your recall results. I see so many people rush through this and it's the biggest thing that stands between what they want and where they are now. Take time to progress your training, it's not a race. Now, as you scan through this, you'll see that I've bolded short lines. Why I do this is because it makes it easy for skim readers. Remember I said people have short attention spans. Some people will read the whole email, some people will skim it and decide. By using these short bolded lines, we're kind of using them as subheaders so that people can get a gist of what it is. So if we only read those bolded bits, take time to progress your training. There's nothing you can wave in the air in the middle of an open field that will work unless you build value in it. Here's the truth. Don't rush ahead to try them in your local walking, local park or walking spots. Take the time to do this. We'll get you much closer to winning the rapid fast recall you want. So even if you only read those, now you've got insights into whether it's worth you reading the rest and you've got a bit of an insight into what it is that I'm suggesting you should do. <clears throat> so again, here I'm here I'm considering the objections that they might have or the, th the reasons why they don't do that. We know that they need to take their time to build value and not rush ahead into trying to use this in a busy open field. It's boring, right? They don't want to, they, want, they don't care about their dog paying attention to them in the kitchen or in their garden. They want their dog to come racing back to them when they're in that open field with dogs and birds and squirrels and scents and all that other stuff. So we have to address that if we're gonna get them to take the action they need to take. Maybe you're expecting me to say that it's this, the one single thing that's gonna grab their attention more than their deep desire to go their own way. Yes, finding the right resources is a big, rewards is a big part of your success, but there's nothing you can wave in the air, blah, blah, blah. So again, I'm not gonna read the whole email. What I'm doing is explaining why their recall training has probably failed in the past. Because they've rushed it, because they haven't built value in the rewards, because they've rushed to using it in busy places when their dog wasn't ready, which may have led them to believe that they will never be able to get the recall that other people have. So again, another link down here to the ebook, and telling them what to do. What's my tip to make this work for you? Practice them daily in your home and your garden. Don't rush ahead. When your dog's responding on autopilot, then you're ready to go to the next stage. They've got all the stuff in the original thing that they downloaded. I'm now guiding them and giving them extra assistance so that they can actually get the results because there is no point giving somebody a lead magnet that doesn't bring them any results. It's not gonna build trust. It's not gonna build desire in them to want to work with you further. More tips.
All right, so that's email two. We've covered email one and email two. Let's go on to email three. So we've helped them with the objections. We've got to here. Now we introduce and we just seed in. This is a very gentle introduction to whatever the product or service is that you want to sell. So I say, if you need some extra handheld in and accountability, my rapid recall course, and I would link this here, can help you essentially, yeah? Link to sales page. Remember, we're not going to skimp on links. People that are interested will click that. People that aren't will go straight past it. So that will keep you on the wagon and get you to the finish line in just four weeks. So there is a very clear promise there that if you do this, it's going to take you four weeks. And by the end of it, you're going to get what you want. I'll be by your side, keeping your mojo in action mind and sharing my tried and proven hacks that will get you the outcome they want. Yeah. And the very clear link that's bolded, get the deets link over to the sales page. Done. That is email free. We've addressed objections and we've seeded interest very gently in the product or service that we want to sell and explained how it can help. All right, let's move straight into email four. Now we need to help them believe that change is possible. Um, we want to give them some social proof. So things like reviews or a story about somebody that you've helped um, so that they can start to imagine that result for themselves and make sure that in this one, we're including a link to a product or service to book a call or to book a call, sorry. So for this one, I'd suggest a delay of one day. You can play around with this. I wouldn't do much more than two or three days maximum. Um, so my subject line here is from and to. So where are they now? Where are you gonna take them from? And if they say yes to your service or product, what's the outcome? Where are they gonna, what are they gonna get? So from deaf as a dodo to all ears and running back when called. Preview text, it happened faster than you'd think possible. What do they want? always quick results. We all want quick results, right? So we start straight in with first name. Can I tell you about Murphy? Murphy had his mum in all kinds of embarrassing situations not so long ago. He'd steal other people's balls and play keep away. He'd gate crash other people's walks and refuse to come back. And worst of all, he'd be having the best time ever while his mum was hanging her head in shame and constantly apologising. What am I doing there? I'm going to tell a story about somebody that I've helped and I'm going to use that story to paint a picture of what that pain point looks like for somebody. Why is this such a thing that they want to fix? So it's embarrassing for them. They're having to apologize to people. Go on to say one day she was late for work because Murphy had the best time ever, keeping his distance at the end of a walk for a full 20 minutes. So these, you'll use things that you people have shared with you. When somebody does book into work with you, what was the trigger point? What was the like, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. What did it look like? Describe it tell their story, use a real one. I'm not saying make up things, use real stories from real people and help the person that you want to help with this email see themselves in it. That was the day that she finally called for help. Okay, we spoke for 15 minutes and I immediately gave her some tips to keep stress at bay on walks while we got to work on turning his runaway habits around. She signed up for my recall course, I've done a really bad job of linking in here, sales page, and committed to the training for just four weeks. So again, we're overcoming that objection of I don't have the time. Then we include a review from that person and then we offer the help. Offer a free 15 minute conversation with no pressure to book anything from me. Often I'll be able to give you instant relief. That's great, right? We all want that. And then a link to book the call. It doesn't have to be a call. Whatever next step you want somebody to take, use some social proof, paint a picture that resonates with them and then invite them to say yes to your help. That is all we're doing when we're selling. All we're doing is telling people how we can help them and making it easy for them to take the next step if they want to. All right, final email, email five. You've stuck with me this long. Thank you very much. Um, email five is the big sell. So now we're really going to go into the details of the product or service that you would like them to know about. Our job is to explain the product or service that you have to offer who it's for, what the outcome is, how does it work? So mine is, the delay for this is one day. So essentially what I've wanted to do is take them through this full sequence in one week. It's been a week since I landed in your inbox with the ebook. I wanna thank you for sticking with me. I hope the techniques I've shared have helped, even if only at home and in quiet places. So we're tapping into helping them see the changes they've made. So sometimes because they haven't seen the big result, which obviously they're gonna need more support for, they might not see that they've had any results 
unless you help them spot it. So let's help them do that. Then we're going to invite them to join the four-week rapid recall course. We're going to link to it. It will take everything you've started and blah, blah, blah. It features games that we covered in the eBooks, giving you game-changing techniques to tap into your dog's unique motivators so you can charge them up and use them to your benefit. Plus, you get direct access to me so I can guide you on which exercises to use for your dog. So we're seeding interest there and explaining that not everything is going to work for every dog, and that's why you might need that personalized help to get the results that you want. All dogs are different, but for years of working with dogs of all kinds of genetic makeups, I've included exercises which I know will hit the spot. Me be on tap to support you. I just burped on a YouTube video. I'm so sorry. Where was I? Learn more about the program. I'm going to be on tap to support you so you can train on your schedule at your pace and still get the personalized guidance. We're tackling objections there. Yeah. It won't work for me. I've got a dog that, that's different. All right. I've worked with all kinds of dogs. I am too busy. I can't make classes or one-to-ones or whatever. I've got a very busy schedule. That's fine. You can do this at your pace at a time that suits you, but you'll still get the personalized guidance that you need. Link to the sales page. And I will link up here to my video on how to craft a good sales page. Because these are all pieces, right? We've got a lead magnet, the email sequence. At the end, it's all driving them to the sales page. That's where they're going to make their final decision. Our emails jobs are to make it so that they're warmer and more keen and they've got more trust in you by the time they hit that sales page. They all work together. And I offer a no quibble money back guarantee. Overcoming, will this work for me? I don't want to waste any money. Objections. If you're struggling, you'll have free access to me. Sign up here. Price risk free. Now, this bit in yellow. Tap into your product or service and the benefits and make the offer. It doesn't need to be a discount. Just what we need to do is tell people exactly what's on offer and why. So when we talk about service and the benefits of the so what, so you include X, Y, Z. Why do you do that? Why is that valuable for them? It's self-paced, so you can do it on your schedule. So time's not an issue. Being available for live calls is not an issue. You get personalized support because I know that you're going to need that. Why? Because not every dog responds in the same way. You might get stuck. You might struggle with something. So we're, what's the feature? What's the benefit? You get this so that, and you could do that in a bulleted list if it's easier for you. I can help you. You and your dog deserve to enjoy your week, walks. You just have to take the first step. What do you say? So let's finish in with a kind of call to action. And then I'm using some PSs. Don't give up consistent training so I want to motivate them to keep going even if they're not ready yet to say yes and this is an important thing to cover when we're talking about lead magnet and email sequence I'm going to finish off with talking about how you know if this email sequence is performing well it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to make sales within one week and we have to let go of trying to get people to convert on our timelines people will say yes when they're ready when they hit their trigger point that says, do you know what? I can't do this anymore. I want to pay for support. I want to solve this problem. That's on their timeline, not ours. Our job is to show up, give value, build a relationship with people and make sure that they know what we have on offer and how it can help. They will take that action when they're ready. So some people might buy from this email sequence. They don't have to for it to have been a successful email sequence. For it to have been a successful email sequence, we want to look at open rates and click rates. A good open rate is around 20%. I would be aiming for a lot higher than that if you've got a small email list, more like 40 to 50%. A good click-through rate, that's people clicking on the links in your emails, is 2 to 5%. If we're achieving those, then we know that the email is performing well. Why? Because the people that are receiving it are engaging with it. They're opening it, they're reading it, and they're clicking through to the things that you're sharing. That is the sign that it's working. Our job with an email sequence and with all of our marketing is to build a relationship. You would follow up. Once they finish this email sequence, they are going to go on to your normal emails, whether that's weekly, fortnightly, monthly, whatever your schedule for email marketing is, and those emails will continue to nurture them, will continue to help them until they're ready to say yes to getting help. We finish off with the final PS that has a sign up for the course link again and the outcome. What do they want? So that's it. 
I hope that you found this helpful. We've covered subject lines, previews, how long to wait before to send an email, how many emails, links. If you take one thing away from this, it's to include links in your emails. Because how are we going to know if people are engaging with your content if there are no links? Now, obviously, you've got this formula. You might want to include links to videos that you've got that will support the ebook. Maybe they're on YouTube, maybe they're on your Facebook page. You can link to those. You might have blog content that can help. You can link to those. We need those links in each email so that we can know whether people are really engaging. Open rates are not a very reliable metric anymore. They're often inflated because Apple iOS indicates that an email has been opened when it hasn't. So our best measure of whether anybody's engaging with our content is our click-through rate. You're only going to get that if you've got links in your email. I hope you found this helpful. In the description below, I will link to Underdogs Unleashed, the course which this email sequence formula comes from, which is packed with lessons. I will include the link to my sales page YouTube video and the link to my lead magnet video because these are all three pieces that go together. I'd love it if you let me know in the comments if this was helpful and I will see you soon.